Abu Nawas, the celebrated court jester and poet, sat slumped in his ransacked home. His heart was heavy, not because his meager possessions were scattered everywhere, but because of the injustice he had suffered. It all started with a dream. The king had dreamt of a magnificent treasure buried beneath the floor of Abu Nawas's humble abode. Convinced of the dream's validity, the king ordered an immediate search. Needless to say, the king's men found nothing. They left Abu Nawas's house in a state of disarray, their departure echoing the emptiness in the poet's heart. The king, however, remained convinced of his dream's truth and offered no apology or compensation for the unwarranted intrusion. Abu Nawas was known for his quick wit and cleverness. He decided to teach the king a lesson, one that would make him realize the folly of his actions. An idea began to form in his mind, a plan as intricate as one of his poems, but with the potential to sting like a scorpion. He found a large, sturdy chest and filled it with nothing. The chest, though seemingly heavy, held only the weight of Abu Nawas's cunning plan. He hired a porter, a man known for his loud voice and theatrical pronouncements. With the chest hoisted onto the porter's back, they set off towards the palace. Abu Nawas walked slightly ahead, his heart beating with anticipation, the rhythm mirroring the porter's heavy steps. The stage was set, the actors in place, ready to enact a play of justice and wit. The king, surprised to see Abu Nawas back so soon, inquired about his unexpected visit. Your majesty, Abu Nawas bowed theatrically, I have brought you something of great value, a treasure beyond compare. The king's eyes gleamed with avarice. A treasure, you say? And what is this treasure that you speak of? He questioned, his voice laced with unconcealed greed. Your majesty, Abu Nawas continued, his voice dropping to a conspiratorial whisper. I have captured the very flies that dare to disturb your sleep, the pesky insects that dare to buzz around your royal presence. The king was perplexed. Flies? He questioned, his brow furrowed in confusion. You bring me a chest of flies? Section 5, The King's Realization Abu Nawas! The king roared, his voice barely audible above the din of buzzing. What is the meaning of this outrage? Abu Nawas, feigning innocence, bowed low. Your majesty, I merely brought you the treasure you so desperately sought. The flies from my humble abode. I believe they were the very same ones that disturbed your sleep and led you to believe in the existence of a hidden treasure. The king, his anger slowly giving way to understanding, saw the irony of the situation. He had, based on a mere dream, caused unnecessary trouble and distress. The flies, now a buzzing nuisance in his own palace, served as a constant reminder of his rash actions. He dismissed his courtiers, who quickly scurried away, eager to escape the buzzing torment. The king then turned back to Abu Nawas, a wry smile playing on his lips. Section 6. A Lesson Learned Abu Nawas, the king chuckled, you have, in your own unique way, taught me a valuable lesson today. He paused, swatting a particularly persistent fly. Dreams, he continued, are but fleeting illusions. Acting upon them without due consideration can lead to unforeseen consequences. Abu Nawas, his point made, bowed low. Your majesty is wise, he said, a twinkle in his eye. May this experience serve as a reminder that sometimes, 
the greatest treasures are not found in chests of gold, but in the wisdom we gain from our mistakes. The king, humbled and amused, ordered his servants to compensate Abu Nawas for the disruption caused and to find a way to rid the palace of its buzzing guests. Abu Nawas left the palace, his heart light and his faith in justice restored. He had, once again, used his wit and humor to teach a valuable lesson, proving that even a king, seduced by the allure of imagined riches, could learn from the wisdom of a jester.